Hallelujah. As we're talking and thinking about Pentecost, about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Yes, my brother, what shall we say? You know, when you gave your life to Christ, the Holy Spirit brought the rebirth of your spirit. Your spirit came alive and everything became new, a new creation. Everything, everything became new in your spirit. The fullness of God is dwelling in your spirit. Your spirit is perfect, but your spirit can be immature. And therefore, your spirit needs to grow up through the Word and through the Holy Spirit. That will always, Romans 8, testify in your spirit. Amen? Romans 8, and cry out with your spirit, Papa, Abba. Holy Spirit brought identity in your spirit. Amen. That's what happened in your spirit. But now, what is baptism in the Holy Spirit? It's where God takes you, that you are in the Holy Spirit. Not the Holy Spirit, just in you. It's not like when you gave your life to Christ, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is not yet with you. No, He's in your spirit. But baptism in the Holy Spirit is you in the Spirit. Are you with me? That's where His hand came upon you. Some say baptism in the Holy Spirit. Yes, the evidence is speaking in tongues. No, that's one of the gifts. First thing, Romans, uh, yeah, Acts 1 verse 8. Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit will come on you, you will receive power to be my witnesses. Do you know if you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, if somewhere this urge will be in you to speak about Christ? If there's no urge, either, either you're quenching the Spirit, ignoring the Spirit, Give him no room, or you are not baptized in the Spirit. And then let somebody pray for you. Please go to a leader. If you have that hunger, you will go. You will go and let, allow somebody to pray for you. Yes, the gifts will flow because you are commanded. Covet the gifts, pursue the gifts. That's your responsibility. And the Holy Spirit is there, He's ready to give His gifts to you. Please look at the teaching that we've sent on the group, the home family group. If your, if your number is not on the group, let the office know about that if you want to have it on the group. Otherwise, just look on the channel, at the channel in YouTube, Our Father's Home. And you will find the teaching there where we talked a lot about the gifts and purpose of each one of the gifts. That is not just healing, is not just for healing. Please go and look at that. That's the gifts of the Spirit. But in my day word for today is John 14, and John 14 talks a lot about the Holy Spirit. So I'm excited about that. I believe God, what we are sharing is prophetically what God wants you and me to know, and not just to know, but to make part of our lives. Okay. I'm going to just give you verse 1 first. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. Don't be anxious, some other translations. Don't be anxious of nothing. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't fear. When will my heart be troubled if I don't understand how to believe in God? He says, don't let your heart be troubled. So, that's just it. No. But, believe in God, your Father. Believe also in me. His son. How's your faith in God? The disciples, they were very anxious when they were in the middle of the storm. And then they woke Jesus up in the boat and said, do you not care that we are going to be destroyed? But they had to have faith in God. When Jesus was walking on the water and came close to them, they were still anxious. But at the end of the day, he said, you little of faith. The anxiousness in the storm had to be replaced with faith in the God that you believe in. So may God help you to, to rise up in faith. Amen. Faith comes through the word, word through the, the hearing, hearing through the word. That is Romans. Creare. Romans 10 verse 17. Hallelujah. You with me? Anybody here? Okay. So, then it goes on to say, 
My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you so, that I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me. So Jesus went to prepare a place for us. But just 22 verses further, he says, If you love me, you'll obey my word. The Father will love me and we will come to you and make our home with you. But Jesus said 20 verses before that, I will go and make, prepare a place for you there. <clears throat> Heaven and earth. There's no separation that will be. Hello? But in that place, he, Jesus is going with a mandate. And hopefully if you understand, remember, crucified with Christ, tried with Christ, buried with Christ, raised with Christ, and seated with Christ in heavenly places. From that place you have a mandate. You have a mandate. That for the home created for you, must at the end of the day, at the end of the day, must be the home for the Father, our Father's home. At the end of the day, it's not about the church. It's about our Father's home. Church, remember, Ecclesia, the Greek word means called out once. He has called me out of darkness into his marvelous light to declare the praises of him. To declare who he is. To declare who he is. That's why you are not dead this morning. That's why you are alive. Because you are here with a man to declare the praises of him. Who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Called out, that is Ecclesia, that is called church. Are you in a church? And what is that? You are called out. I'm in a place where I'm called out of darkness into his light. And I'm in his light. This is the place where I live. But called out means those with a mandate. Church is not the end of the picture. Church is the concept of people that are called with a mandate. Out of darkness to do something. To do, to do, to do. And Jesus will build his church with you, with me. And at the end of the day, Father gives the church to Jesus as his. Not a trick question. As his bride. Jesus gives the church to the Father as his home. Jesus will build the church and present his church to the Father. Father, this is your home. Father will come and present the church to Jesus as his bride. Are you with me? Oh man, let's be part of it. Not be spectators. And just you're on the lorry and that's it. Glory, glory on the lorry and we'll see where it's going. Please not. In Jesus' name. So we're part of the whole concept. We're part of the dream that Father is establishing where He, they will come and make their home with us. Make their home with us. So Jesus went up and He presented through His blood. He said, Father, your dream, your dream can become a reality. Your dream that the nations will be your home can happen through the blood that I present to you. The offering, the perfect, perfect, perfect Lamb. That is worthy to open the seal. Amen. And in this, all of this, Jesus says, I'm going, I'm going to do a work. But if you want to see, see another one, that is sent to you. That's part of the Trinity. How must I come to know that another one? I must know Jesus Christ. I must know Jesus, the Son of God. A lot of Jesus is in, in, uh, in Judaism, in, among the Israelites, the name Jesus. But Jesus, the anointed one, Jesus with the Holy Spirit upon him, that means Christ. Christ, it means the anointed one. The Jesus, that's not just the son of Joseph, because Jesus, he became fully man. But Jesus... Not first of all, son of Joseph, first of all, son of God. And with Holy Spirit upon him, because he had a mandate. Jesus Christ. Are you with me? You're standing in God's mandate. 
But know why the Holy Spirit is with you. And he will never leave you, never forsake you. We're going to a verse. Verse 16, 17. Please write down. I will ask the students tomorrow and the leaders that they write down. What is not written will be written on the farm for a week. What about that? Hallelujah. Great. And I will ask, Jesus will ask the Father, and he will give you another, another advocate to help you, and he will be with you forever. The Spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. Let's say, with you, in you. I will ask the Father, and he will give you. Jesus asked the Father, but Father also say, sent his promise. The Father sent the promise, what he promised them. Another advocate to help you and be with you forever. We're going to look at seven facets of who Jesus is. Sorry, who Jesus is, but also the Holy Spirit. But yeah, we can go back. Thank you. So in all of that, uh, I want to give you first a few verses. Maybe I must just give you one for the sake of time. In Revelation, there's five different places where John is speaking and he says, I'm writing to the church. And then also, and it's coming, the word is coming from the throne of God, who is the four creatures. We talked about that many times, eh? The four living creatures. And from the seven spirits that's before the throne of God. Seven spirits that's before the throne of God. Now, it's, there's a trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And the Spirit is not Father, Son, and seven spirits. <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit. Now, we can go into the theology. There's a lot of guys going into a lot of things. But let's not go in today. But can we say... First of all, I want to challenge you that you will understand how Holy Spirit wants to reveal himself to you in seven different ways. When you have a relationship with Jesus in our vision statements there, we say with the good shepherd, relate to him in a certain way. The bread of life, relate to him. We're going to disciple with a good shepherd. We're going to build with a bread of life. We're going to train, be trained with a true way, the truth, the life. There we go. The way, the truth, the life. Hello? We will be activated and activate others with a resurrection and life. Okay. So, what am I saying? I'm challenging you today, on the day of Pentecost, I'm challenging you to allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to you who He is. And allow Him to be who He is in your life. If we are among one another, and there's a certain king... But you don't acknowledge him as king. You will have a certain relationship with that man. And you will not position yourself towards him in a relationship where he will be your king. You with me? Now I say, relate to the Holy Spirit in the context of who he is. Your relationship with Holy Spirit is if you understand who he is. I don't accept that man as king. And if I don't accept that man as king, as, as the president, I will relate in a certain way. The other man, he will give his life for that president. Because he has a certain commitment, certain relationship with him. Because why? He acknowledged him for who he is. And too many times the church, in the past, not anymore, we saw the Holy Spirit as the wind, as the fire, as the living water. As the early rain, as the latter rain, what will the wind do? He will move, but you will not understand, the word says. You will not understand. You will see the impact of the wind. You will see the impact of the wind, but you will not see the wind. Hello? The water, the result of the water, the freshness, the growth, the landscape that is like this. Namakwalant, this, and suddenly, suddenly next moment is boom, like that. And you cannot believe what it was two months ago. Come like a dove. 
Is he a dove? You have a relationship with a dove? No. That's all expressions to help you to understand how to relate in how he works. That's in to relate in how he works. He is not. He's not fire. He's like a consuming fire because God is like consuming fire in the sense of flesh cannot stand before him. So he wants to explain to you, you cannot come with your flesh and have that relationship with God because he's consuming fire in the sense of when your flesh must stand before him, consumed. But he is a person in the Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Okay, so he says, he will help you. He will help you and be with you forever. Spirit of truth. The spirit of truth. The spirit of truth. My brother and my sister, when you jump into this word and you ask Holy Spirit to help you, you understand this word. He's the spirit of truth. There's other spirits. Why must he say he's the spirit of truth? Because there's a lot of other spirits. And the father of all those spirits is the spirit that is the father of all lies. So understand, there is a spirit of deception. There is a spirit of bitterness. There is a spirit of rejection. And you want to get into the spirit of rejection. How? By thinking the thoughts of rejection. Get into the language of rejection. And then you are drawing that spirit to you. But when you look at this, you ask the Holy Spirit to lead you. Otherwise, some other spirit of religion, some demon of religion, some demon of condemnation. How many people read the word and afterwards you just feel miserable because there was not, there was not the Holy Spirit that confronted you, but there was the, the devil that condemned you. It's so close to one another. But God in his love, when he treats you as a son, Every son that he accepts, he disciplines. Every one that he loves, he disciplines. He brings a pattern of life into them. He brings a pattern of life into them because he says, I've put excellence in you. I've put excellence in your spirit. And from your spirit, that excellence that is in your spirit, I want you to live an excellent life. But then we need to adjust a lot of things in your life and don't fight it. But receive that pattern that is called discipline. Are you still here? Receive the pattern. But the spirit of truth will bring it to you. Truth that will set you free. The spirit of truth that will set you free. For what? The Holy Spirit can bring a lot of truth. Now, in the world, you can get people that will, they will come like the Holy Spirit. You come as a counselor, an advocate, a, a guide. He will bring a lot of, they can bring a lot of principles. Excellent, excellent. Sometimes better has a lot of teaching from pastors or leaders or teachers. They can give you excellent keys to have a better life. But with some or other spirit. But there is the spirit of truth that will you give you keys not for a better life, but the truth that will bring you into relationship. Holy Spirit will give you keys for life for relationship because this is eternal life to know the father and the one that he sent jesus christ but the other spirits will give you can give you fantastic ideas i mean come on guys these guys out there they don't serve god but some of them they have fantastic books of how to have a better life Are you with me but it's not that like as truth that will set you free for relationship. The spirit of truth, the truth that he will reveal is to be free to relate. Free to relate. Free from yourself to relate. Not just free for, for, for the sake of freedom. Freedom so that you can relate. The spirit will always draw you into relationship with the father and the son. You want to know the Holy Spirit in this season? Allow him to set you free for a relationship, not to set you free for a better life. Okay? Amen. Let's say, I will allow the Holy Spirit to set me free as the Spirit of truth to have a relationship. So you get into the Word, 
You get into the word, not to have a better life. You get into the word so that after you read the word, if the Holy Spirit opened up something, you will be able to relate more accurately with the Father and the Son. If you read the word, hear the word, sing the word, hello, with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please, don't read the word if it's with some other haha demon. But ask the Holy Spirit to open it up for you. Amen. The Spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him. They cannot accept him because they have no relationship. Because it neither sees him. They cannot see him. They cannot know him. Knowing the Holy Spirit is the context of not information, but relational. The knowing is relational. The knowing is not information. The devil has thousand times more information about God than you and me. But there's no relating with that information. But you I could have a millionth of a knowledge of God than with the information that the devil knows. But with that, you can relate. When you gave your life to Christ, how much of the word did you know? But you, were, you knew how to bring your everything before God. And you received his love. Amen. But then to go further with God. Further with God. I need to be set free from myself. And allow the spirit of truth. And when truth touches you. When truth touches you. You are set free. It's, it's like light goes on. And then we see the fight between light and darkness. There's no fight. Darkness must flee. Klar. Finish. Truth touches you, lies must go. Deception must go. So you allow the spirit of truth to touch you and you are set free for relating. Amen. They cannot accept him. It's impossible because they don't see him. How do you see God? How do you see the spirit? When you're in a relationship with God, you start to see the person of the Holy Spirit. The world can see the impact of the wind, the wind. The world can see the impact of the fire. The world can see maybe Holy Spirit like a dove. The world can see when everything is shaken. The world can see the impact of the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit that brought, brought physical healing, that brought the prophecy, that brought the uh, speaking in tongues, the deliverance from demons. The impact of the Holy Spirit, the world can see. But relating with a person, the God head in the Holy Spirit is only the church. They cannot see, they cannot relate, they don't know, they can't, it's impossible. But my brother, my sister, unfortunately, a lot of us in the past, not in the future, never came into really relating with a person, the Holy Spirit, as the one in the garden. I know there's a few that's going into the rest of the Lord, but if you need to stand at the back, um, you're welcome. Or your neighbor, just give him a holy smack, you know, to wake up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. Amen. What are we saying? See him or know him. Cannot. That knowing is in relationship. But you know him because you have a relationship with him. For he lives with you and in you. Okay. I'm going to leave that there. Next one. Verse. Ready? Six. But the advocate. Now is the advocate again. The Holy Spirit whom the Father will send. Send. He asked the Father. The Father will send. In my name. Name of Jesus will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. He will not speak from his own. He will not say whatever he wants to. He will just say the words of Christ, remind you of the words of Christ, and explain it to you. So that your focus is put on Jesus. Amen? Jesus says, I will not speak from myself. What I hear from the Father, that I say. What I see him doing, that's what I do. That's the beauty of humility in the Trinity. Putting the focus on the other one. If God says, humble yourself. He says, be like me. Humble yourself and I will lift you up. So that you can have a, <clears throat> a throne. I will lift you up. So authority so that you can be somebody. 
when you humble yourself, you are really someone. Not after the trick of humbling yourself, then God will make you somebody. He will lift you up to be somebody. Not at all. When you humble yourself, it means you're becoming like him. When you humble yourself, that's when you are somebody. And when you understand who you are in humility, God can use you. Because you will not curse your own identity. May humility be part of your lifestyle. Not just an attitude that you choose. May humility be part of your lifestyle, my brother, my sister. Amen. That will protect you against that which comes from the center of hell. Pride. will remind you. Then, can you do one by one? Not at all. Hallelujah. Now, these seven facets. In the Amplified, talks about the Holy Spirit, who is the standby, strengthener, counselor, intercessor, advocate, helper, and comforter. Please, come to know all seven. We cannot, we, we got into a quarter of the teaching this morning, so I will stay with the quarter. Um, this, now, morning, afternoon, afternoon. But all I'm asking is, can you start to relate to the one that is called the standby? I have a relationship with the strengthener. What is the strengthener saying to you today? What is the intercessor doing with you today? That's now if you have relationship with him. That is not first the wind, the fire, the cloud, the rain. Who is the advocate? How is Holy Spirit presenting himself as advocate in your life? How is he the helper, the comforter? Maybe we can easily do those last two. But can you allow the Holy Spirit in all these facets? Please, we're supposed to pray actually for you in all those facets. But maybe we must, we will talk about this another time. But I want to lay just word, more word foundation before we pray. So maybe next Sunday or the Sunday after that, when we finish with this, we really want to pray for you that you will, God will, will reveal, that the Holy Spirit will reveal himself as advocate in your life. Reveal himself as intercessor. Can you prepare your hearts for that? Can you get into the words for that? We can lay hands on you and pray that you will never be the same as the Holy Spirit will take hold of you in such a way. That the advocate will come and rule over you. Holy Spirit will come over you. The strengthening will be over you. The helper will be over you. Over me there is just the help of God. Over me there is the intercessor. Over me is the helper, is the comforter. He, the comforter came over you. Let's go. Amen. Allow that man. First of all, the standby. Can I just say? Um, medical doctor. When they say he's on standby, what does it mean? Cell phone must be on. He must be ready. He must be ready. When there's a call, he must be there. If he's on standby and the phone is off and he's just wara-waraing this side, not sinning, but just having a wonderful time with his wife and this, but he said he's on standby, he's going to be in trouble. The Holy Spirit is forever. Because of his nature, he's always on standby. He's always there for you. Always there for you. You start to reach out this amount to him, he will be there. Half a sentence of crying out to him, he sensed what's in your spirit, in your cry, when you put half of a word out there. And he's already there. He's on standby. He's there, there, there for you always. That's part of his nature. That's not just a job. Come to know me in that way. So when the problem, if you started to talk negatively, Suddenly, hey, yay, 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 yay. Uh, let's assign the demon of negativity to that man. The demon of negativity must be on standby because this man, he has our talk. Judging issues with people the whole time. Contents, contending with one another. Depression, greed, 
last, what Juaras Chachis, you calling those demons on standby. You calling those demons. The standby is to, I will support you in this. So when you start to become negative, this demon of negativity, I will support you in your negativity. I will support you in your anxiety. I will support you in your stress. I will support you in your fear. I will support you in your lust or the issues or your judgment or your bitterness or unforgiveness. I will, I'm here. I'm your standby. I'm standing ready. I'm waiting for you just to fall into that bitterness. But when somebody is called and sent to you in the flesh, sent to you in the flesh, what are you going to do? Because the few demons are on standby for you. But don't be demon focused. Okay? Because it's just copycat. The devil cannot create something. He can only copycat. That is just confirmation with the fact that the, the one, the one in heaven and on earth is on standby for you. Heaven is on standby. Because the God that is with you just like this can command angels like this to open up the way for you. Amen. You don't, you're not a boss that can command angels. Not at all. You cannot. They go only under the command of God. You have a relationship with God and God will command them in the way he wants to. To be over you, with you, fight for you. Amen. Are you here? You're still here. Please, please. That's God as a standby. Strengthener. He will strengthen you. How will God strengthen you? Holy Spirit, please strengthen me. I'm strengthened. Do you walk? Um, strengthen you through the word of God. Through this word. God, please strengthen me. I will, he will push you into the word of God. And you will be strengthened by the word. Strengthened by the word. Strengthened through prayer. Strengthened through the word. Strengthening what you will proclaim through the word. But he will give you strength. Not by power. Nor by might. But by my Holy Spirit. Not your power give you strength. Not by your might will give you strength. But by the Holy Spirit you will receive strength. Amen. So if God says... Be strong and courageous. Be strong. Finish. Just command. Command. Be strong. Okay. Be strong quickly for me as a command. <laughs> okay. To be strong is get into the word. Believe what God says. Fill you with the word. Fill you with who he is. You're going to fill you with who you is if you don't understand who he is. And allow him to be who he is. Amen. Amen. Be filled with the spirit. That's a different concept even. Holy Spirit in your spirit, rebirth, perfect, baptized in the Holy Spirit. But then the third one, you need to be filled with the Spirit. And that is your responsibility to be filled with the Spirit because you can fill yourself later with other chacha spirits that actually didn't pay for that building. That building, your, you, that body is not a building for the demons illegally squattering there because you said they can do it because that building even doesn't belong to you Paul says to the guys and it says hey this is the temple of the Holy Spirit it's not your temple your body is not belong doesn't belong to you your temple is the your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit therefore glorify God in the body that belongs to him his temple tell your neighbor his temple Okay. All right. Strengthener. Counselor. Someone. Someone. Blessed. 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 Is he who walks in the. By not walking in the counsel of the wicked. I'm, what must I then do? Walk in the counsel of the counselor. The Holy Spirit. Blessed are you. Happy. Fortunate. To be envied. If you don't walk. In the counsel of ungodly. But if I not actively walk in the counsel of the Holy Spirit, the counselor, I don't have to choose. Who, who chooses that tomorrow? Now I'm going to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Oh, there I go. 
Who will be so pathetic? Nobody is going to make that choice. But by choosing and ignoring the counsel of the counselor, it's either that direction or that. I'm not, there's no standing still. Either tomorrow you're going to walk here. You're sitting. And you're taking the counsel from the word under the counselor. And if not, you're taking some counsel of, it's okay, just to hear something. And don't, it doesn't have to touch you. You've heard this before. You used to church. Don't take condemnation. Yeah, don't take condemn, condemnation. But it doesn't, it's not really so necessary for you. And you can sit here and take the counsel of the ungodly. The spirits that are against God. Or I can sit here and I can take the counsel from the counselor, the Holy Spirit. And there's a relating. Remember, spirit of truth for relationship. And the Holy Spirit will translate what you hear for relationship. He will always translate what you're going through, what you experience, positive, negative, the word, what people say. He will translate it to you for relationship. Let's say, Holy Spirit, translate for relationship. Supposed to write that down. Translate for relationship. Intercessor, I'm running. Intercessor. Intercessor. What are we talking about? Romans 8. You don't know what to pray. Romans 8 says, you don't know what to pray, but the Holy Spirit. That knows the depth of God. He will intercede for you. And it will come through groanings, come through you. But that's what you don't understand. That's why even praying in tongues, my brother and my sister, is very important. You make sure you go to somebody. Not for somebody to brag about, I have the gifts. No. Rubbish. Sometimes God used certain people with the gifts of healing and the gifts of this. Don't curse that person by elevating him. And by God's grace, I hope that, that that person mustn't find the identity and success in certain gifts that work through them. God just couldn't find a donkey that day, you know, <sighs> that he used. But when he uses a donkey, uh, William, then really get a fright, eh? Tomorrow, if you walk here and the cats start to speak to you, hey, you're going to listen, man. <laughs> okay, that was beside the point. Sorry. Uh, intercessor. You know, you sing the song, where you go, I will go. When I go to the left, when you go to the left, I will go to the left. Who I song? When I go to the right, I will go to the right. Wherever you send me, Lord, there I will go. I will follow you. That's easy to say. You can sing the song. But three minutes later, three minutes later, they're going to sing in tongues. And will you then go with the Spirit? That you will give yourself to pray in tongues because at that moment you are praying for a church in Argentina in the, in where the Holy Spirit is using you as intercessor. Hello. And he has the intercessor working through you, praying for a church that's going through hell in Argentina. You don't know that, man. You're going to know that in heaven. But you are willing because you have a relationship with the intercessor is, that is waiting for a temple. His temple, temple of the Holy Spirit. That he can use. Where is a man that I can use that will focus on God when he starts to pray in tongues, sing in tongues? And at the moment, you are singing in tongues and that is just worship before loud. You are praying in tongues and because God wants to give you a breakthrough, Holy Spirit is translating the tongues as a request from your heart for a breakthrough. But G and G and G and then one other, they are praying in tongues and the Holy Spirit, he chooses. That will be intercessory tongue. That will be, that will be, that will be, that will be, that will be intercessory tongue today. That's it. And you will pray for this, 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 this. You will worship, you will get the breakthrough, you will ask for this, you will be asking for that. Oh man, that's the Holy Spirit strengthening you, helping you. Being an intercessor, so ready to intercede for you that the battle belongs to the Lord, not to you. And he's so ready, I stand by, to fight that battle for you. But I'm too lazy just to sing in tongues. <laughs> Come on. Next time they pray in tongues, sing in tongues, you see your brother not doing that, just punch him. Next time he will 
not sit next to you. <laughs> no, no. Are you with me? Please, man. Why must we make it so complicated? Allow God to use you. Get a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Okay? When you have a relationship with Him, your life, there will not be no selfishness can live with you. Intercessor. Intercessor. In intercessor, intercessory prayer, Paul says in Galatians 4.19, somebody just check me out. My children for whom I am in labor till Christ is formed in you. Paul in labor? No. He has no identity crisis. He has no, no. Paul in labor in the spirit. And if you allow the intercessor, and if you want to have relationship with the intercessor, ask God to put a seed in you. A word. God, give me a word for somebody, for something, for a nation, for education, for the schools in Bluefontaine, for the university, for the guys, that, for, for the poverty situation, for youth that doesn't have a word, for, for the guys more and more and more and more and more committing suicide and in depression, the new generation. Give me a word for them, Lord. And help me to carry it until there's a release. Ask a woman that gave birth. When they are in labor and after labor, there's a difference in what they feel in their body. You won't believe it. In labor, it must, the child must get out. But not get out like the de devil must get out and futsack. That's not what the mama is saying. The child must just get out and futsack. No. But for an excellent, wow, fulfillment. And there's a certain satisfaction in the spirit that you could experience in the spirit when you start to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit as an intercessor. That you will even be able to sense it when you pray that there's a release. Not a release to be set free necessary. A release for a birthing. A satisfaction that a mama, mother could feel. One day we will tell uh, ten mothers to come and speak about that. And that fulfillment of, wow, this is my baby. Are you still here? Intercessor, am I right? Galatians 4, 19. Okay. So if he's in labor, it's not just that time of laboring. It's you need to put it here. And in the beginning you pray. How many times did you pray and you feel nothing is happening? Okay, the test saying, I'm pregnant. Oh, I feel different. Tomorrow, yes, I can feel he, he has grown. Tomorrow, whoa, he's growing. I feel a centimeter. Freaky. But why do we want to be freaky when we must carry something in our spirit that if I don't sense it tomorrow with a prayer? Tomorrow you pray. And you pray for certain things and nothing happened. God determine if you have elephant pray, prayer or chicken prayer. <laughs> chicken prayer, three weeks. Oh, he's not giving birth. He's listening on eggs, eh? Okay. You understand the concept. Three weeks. But elephant, one year, two years. How long? Before the birthing? Come on. Somebody must know. Two years. It's the two years at the back. So, this is unfair. Elephant get discouraged after one year. Looking at the chicken. That's unfair. Three weeks. Chaka, chaka, chaka. Summer 12. Three weeks. 12. Two years. One. That's unfair. God wants you to do elephant prayer. You carry for two years. That chicken is not going to live 80 years like that elephant. He's going to become breakfast. <laughs> okay. Are you with me? Are you with me, please? So start to come to have a relationship with Holy Spirit, the intercessor. Holy Spirit, help me to come to know you as an intercessor. And you will find 100 principles from the word. How it can be. And how it sometimes cannot be. And don't become discouraged. You are not there to abort the abortion is with the discouragement of I have such a lot of other things to do that become priority. And not like this child 
is the only priority. No, not at all. Not at all. But be faithful so that you will not be a spiritual womb for abortion. Okay? Please, come to know him as the intercessor. All right, next one, advocate. Advocate. Holy Spirit as your advocate, you know? You're in a court case. They're in a court case. And uh, the, what's the Anne Claire? What's the Anne Claire? The prosecutor. Oh, yeah. The prosecutor says something, but he's pathetic, man. You are not guilty. It's, it's totally ridiculous. And you just stand up and you, on plof, you, that thing. And you just, ah, oh, that's a lot of ry- lies and this and this and that. What are they going to say? Security going to take you out if you throw such a tantrum. But too many times when the enemy take you to court, you throw tantrums, you make a circus of the whole thing. And you walk out there with condemnation and feeling even more guilty with whatever the enemy said. And he just wanted you to take offense. He just wanted you to put aside the peace of God, the joy of the Lord, just to put all of that aside so that you walk out there with trouble. Because he wants to cause trouble in you. Be anxious of nothing. Uh uh-uh, uh, be, ca- be anxious of everything. So, whatever his agenda is just the opposite of what you read in the word. What is his agenda with you? Just translate everything in the negative of what he's saying here. And that is his agenda. You'll find a whole Bible full of his agenda with you. Just put it in the opposite of what you read. That's his agenda. Are you with me? But when you get in there, advocate, you have an advocate, he will tell you what? Shut up. Behave yourself. Why? The battle belongs to the law. The battle belongs to the advocate. And you say nothing unless the advocate asks you to say it. If he put you on the stand, he put you on the stand, whatever the enemy is telling you, answer in the name of the Lord the truth, the truth are you with me? but what will the advocate bring? the battle belongs to him he will bring oh help me with that I, I submit to you the evidence and the Holy Spirit will bring the evidence always and you will stand amazed at the evidence that the Holy Spirit will bring from this book your most Horrible of your honorable. (laughs) Here, I bring to you this evidence. Because the enemy says, because the enemy says, yeah, I can give you some information. I can give you some information. These stones, bread. Um, Jesus, I bring some other evidence. You will not live from bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Oh, I bring some evidence. You can jump from the, from the church. I bring some evidence. I, you know, God has given you the kingdoms of this world. Yes, you can get it. Shortcut. Drive. Fast food. Come through. Just bow before me and you have everything. Get behind me, Satan. One you will worship and no one else. If you don't know how this Holy Spirit wants to bring the evidence, you don't know what the advocate is saying. And you are in a court case and you fight the battle against the accuser of the brethren, the enemy. And you will fight your battle against the devil, you and you alone. But if you come to know the advocate and how he's using the word of God, he is fighting as advocate for you against the accuser. Against the prosecutor. And you can be so lame with the prosecutor. because then you, And you don't forgive yourself for certain things that you've done in your life. Why will you not allow the advocate to bring testimony? To bring the proof. Testimony that is valid. That is testimony that is not manipulative or manipulating the situation. Can you allow the Holy Spirit to be the advocate? Are you with me? I was uh, 
yeah, in one place, and this big guy took me, and he put me down there on the bed, just put me down in front of 15 guys and say, you, this and this and this, and all the swear words. I asked, there were five that remembered what, the story. Who remembers the story? Nobody here. Three, four, five, six. It want breakfast. Okay. And uh, sat me down, and I said, God, you can see how big he is. And, uh, and he was like swearing at me, just belittling at this. You, pr, 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 pr. And he said, you bring this in, in, in the bungalow, and you bring this among us, and blah, 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 blah. Because they had a lot of demonic dreams. And I said, no, it's not me. It's you doing this, 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 this. That inviting all the devils in your life in, in this bungalow. And he started to scream in my face. You are, you say I'm a brrrr. I said, okay, God help. And when I said that, God said to me, I never told you to say that. So you can fight my own battle and I can try to defend myself. Like in the flesh. And that guy will beat me up. And I was like, God, why did I ask you to help me? You were stupid enough. God will not say it like that. <laughs> I'm stupid enough to ignore him. Instead of Holy Spirit said, be silent. Now, because I was praying in tongues, sitting there, until one t at one stage they start to uh, mock Jesus and swear, swear at him, you know, use curse words. And I just felt something rise up in me i just felt yes and i said you guys what a lot of fools you're all gonna burn in hell forever because i cannot tell you what they said but it was horrific you're all gonna burn in hell so pathetic then when i got the shock you know you're supposed to be the good guy with a john 3 16 and i said what a lot of fools god is not sending you there you're taking yourself there and they were like, and suddenly there was just this silence. You can hear nothing. And then I said, but you know, there's a God of love. And he loves each one of you. And he has this plan. And that plan. And a half an hour became three, four hours. So one, two o'clock in the morning. Four o'clock, you need to rise for inspection in the army. Maybe one or two of you remember. Uh, so four o'clock, you're up. Till two o'clock in the morning. And this guy that taught me in 70 different swear words what he's going to do with me, now he's asking questions. But how does this work then? How does that work? Beginning I thought he's mocking. But then I realized this guy is really asking. Next evening, they call me again. Do I mean They are calling you at that chef's bungalow again. I said, I'm not going. I'm tired. I'm gone. Do I will help you? We will organize everything for the inspection tomorrow morning. Go. Went there, the guy that grabbed me said, Domini, I've organized that room for you. Um, there's 12 of us that want to give our lives to Christ. Um, you're going to sit there. I'm going to send them in one by one. And lastly, I'm going to come and we need to make our lives right with the Lord. This man organized the whole evangelistic uh, campaign. <laughs> but last night, hello? People could be saying to you, but how they look. And how what they do, they want to mock you, they can do this, they can do the mo whatever. Such a lot of negative things that you can take it personal. Or you can sit there praying in tongues and you, only, you don't know what you prayed for. Praying in tongues, but I'm praying for my protection. <laughs> my head is I'm praying for protection while praying in tongues. But meanwhile, praying in tongues, I'm praying for them for their salvation. On the next evening, everything happened. Even demons came out and a lot of atheists got the fright of their lives and suddenly they are quiet about a lot of stuff. Oh man, can you allow God, please? Advocate, the battle belongs to the Lord. Next one, helper. And this example is actually applicable there also. God just help me. God just help me. And when you ask the Holy Spirit for help, be open for strategies that's ridiculous. Okay? I think Joshua asked, God, you need to help me with these people. They nearly destroyed Moses. They nearly destroyed Moses. How can I go with these people into the land? God, I need you. You need to help me. And then the ridiculous Jericho strategies and that type of thing. 
that will happen with your life because he wants to help you, but he wants to get the glory for it. He wants to help you, but he must be the center of it. He wants to help you, but he wants to use it for his, for his kingdom, for his purposes, not for your opinion, not just to help you, but to show himself as a good, good father. Amen. Allow him to boast about the Father. Allow the Holy Spirit to brag about Jesus. In what way? By allowing him as helper in your life. Help me that I will do tomorrow what I do unto his glory. Help me that this challenge will become a testimony in the name of Christ. That's the help. Not the help just to get out of trouble. Not just help to get a breakthrough. Not just help for financial provision. Not just help to get out of depression. But help, and that through the help, they will be a testimony of Christ. Bring her to the Lord by challenging a lot of other people and giving them hope. Amen. Understand how the helper, the Holy Spirit, is going to work. He's so ready to help. But if it's not going to bring leads to the glory of God, if it's what, how he must help is not bringing glory unto the Lord, if it's not giving breakthrough to worship God more, if it's not going for more intimate relationship with God, you will not see his help. He's not going to be spiteful with all respect. But he's there for his agenda. He's for the agenda from the Father and from Jesus. And he cannot be... He cannot change. Holy Spirit cannot change his character. If he's there to give glory and focus to Jesus and the Holy Spirit. You can ask what you want, but he cannot change his character. And that is to put the focus on Jesus and put the focus on the Holy Spirit and on the Father. So you ask him for his help. But in such a way that you align your life so that through your breakthrough, through your circumstances, you will give glory unto the Father and unto Jesus. And you will come to know Holy Spirit as helper. Holy Spirit as helper. You still here? He will help you to stay awake even during a sermon. It's amazing. For the glory of the Lord. Not for the encouragement of the pastor. Okay, hallelujah. Number seven, comforter. Comforter, Holy Spirit will be when you're not feeling lucky, you will say, ach, sis doch, ach, sis doch, ach, sis doch. No, not at all. This comfort, when you look in the context, even in Isaiah, comfort my people. The prophet says, God says through the prophet, this comfort has to do with the inner healing, with the inner strength. With, you can put all these facets in it in any case. But this comfort is, he's there with me. He's there with me. He's healing my heart. I'm belonging. This identity that I belong, I belong. He's bringing comfort to me. You know? Karfufel with 10 guys can give you comfort. That I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking for comfort. The lady sleeping with 10 guys, that's not going to give you comfort. The guy trying to prove that he's somebody, he's going to give him comfort when he's successful in his business. When people don't talk bad about me. When everything is, is wonderful in Creario at OFA or in the church and everything is bringing me comfort. Yeah, that's true. It's nice to have a break from challenges. Are you with me? God can help us with that also. But that is my, not my source of comfort. Comfort that comes from the person that I started to come to know as a person. Not just the work of the Holy Spirit. Not just the cool breeze. Not just the work of the Spirit, but the person of the Holy Spirit is my comforter. So when I'm with him and I know who he is, I find comfort even just in his presence. The child finds comfort because he knows this is my dad. He didn't prove him as dad so much yet. I just know. I enter the kingdom as a child. I, ju I just know. You know, and that hurt, he fell and he got hurt and everything. There's nothing yet medically done to it. But 
in the arms of his dad. <sighs> Suddenly the cry is gone. That's freaky. Because the hurt is still the same. But <laughs> are you with me? I know. So there's circumstances that could still be the same. That, that, that blood on the knee is still there. Just as much as before he picked him up. But there's a comfort in the arms of the father. So in your life, that blood or that, on that knee could still be the same. That circumstances maybe didn't change at all. But in the arms of the Father, you'll have a comfort. Like a little child. With his dad. Are you with me? Can you please, please allow the person, the Holy Spirit as a person in the Godhead, as the comforter, to bring comfort through the word. He will not bring condemnation, but through the word. I sent out my word and I've healed them. Sent out my word. Sent out the word. The word just went. No. The word with the spirit. The word with the spirit. The spirit brings the word to you. If the spirit doesn't bring the word, some other demon spirit will bring the word. The devil, the demon spirit, the devil himself brought the word. I know, sent out, but how can I say, um, taken, taken from an avenue by the enemy and presented to Jesus. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan, for the messenger, for the messenger. He didn't say, get behind me, Satan, for the word of God that was quoted. No, at all. He brought context to the word. But he told the one that brought the word, get behind me, Satan. Make sure that you get into the word. It's the helper opening it up. It's the comforter opening it up. It's the standby. It's the counselor opening it up for you. And you'll be amazed how you come to know the person of the Holy Spirit. God, come and help us. We really need you. I pray for every man, woman in this place. And I say, God, forgive us for ignoring the Holy Spirit many times as the person in the Godhead. God, forgive us for many times just having a relationship with the impact of the Holy Spirit. What the wind do, what the fire can do, what the living water can do, what the early rain, the latter rain can do. With thankfulness, thanking you for the for the work of the holy spirit knowing the gifts where we can sit here when we know the gifts we know how to operate in the gifts but knowing the spirit himself have mercy on us lord please and as we reach out to the word help us to see you holy spirit for who you are we don't want you to be quenched we don't want you to be ignored but come and take your place in this temple that belongs to you and you alone. Help us to see the agenda that you received from Father and Jesus. And help us, Lord, to understand how in your work you always want to bring the focus on Jesus and the Father. Be welcome in every man and every woman in this place. And God, where we accommodated a lot of other spirits many times, spirit of negativity or bitterness or offense or lust or whatever depression God we say we walk away from that we tell those spirits you have no authority in this place you have no authority you didn't buy you, you this this temple was not bought by you it was bought through the blood of the lamb therefore you have no authority with us we walk away from you we will not have fellowship with demons we walk away we walk away and we ask Holy Spirit help us to walk in the counsel of the Holy Spirit the counsel of the counselor. I pray that for every man and woman and that we will work through these principles and God, when we pray, we're going to pray for one another in a week or two. God, that you will surprise us in such an amazing way in this season to come to know the person of the Holy Spirit. So we pray. As all say, Amen.